You don't need to be a rugby league diehard to know that Wally Lewis is one of the greatest players of all time. He's not known as the king for nothing. Now, though, heavy is the head that wears the crown. Physically, the 63-year-old is as fit as a fiddle, but his brain is failing him. Wally's been diagnosed with probable CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. It's a slow but ultimately fatal form of dementia caused by repeated blows to the head. Tragically, the game Wally continues to love will be the likely reason for his death. But this sporting hero is not going down without a fight. If Wally Lewis is the king, then there's no doubt Brisbane's Suncorp Stadium, the old Lang Park, is his castle. You'd have a lot of happy memories at this place. Yes. Is this place home to me? Oh, it sure is. There's no better place in the world. How much they love you. On State of Origin night, let's be honest, Queensland goes a little bit feral. Barone's fans worship the ground their heroes walk on. Well, I can barely hear you, mate, after over all the cheering they're giving. Have a look at this. This is a, it's a thrill, it's an honour, it's a privilege um, to play representative football. I guess I was just lucky. I was in the right place at the right time. Be a part of State of Origin history um, is, a, is a real thrill, a real honour. There he is, the Emperor of Lake Park. Wally Lewis remembers his decorated career like it was yesterday. A rugby league immortal who captained Australia. But perhaps more famously, inspired Queensland. Winning a record eight Man of the Match awards in his stellar state of origin career. But for the first time, he's revealing that remembering what actually happened yesterday is now just about impossible for him because he's in a health battle as big as any challenge he faced on the field. In fact, the issue is this stark. Wally's memory is so shot that he can't even recall what doctors have told him. So you realised he had a problem. What's the diagnosis? Um... There's the big one. I can't even remember the name of what it's called. Probable CTE. Probable. Um, yeah, CTE. And that's, that's Wally's partner, Linda, helping him out, it, uh, confirming he's been diagnosed with chronic traumatic encephalopathy, better known as CTE. It's the condition becoming increasingly synonymous with retired footballers. Caused by repeated head traumas, it results in memory loss, behavioural issues, and even affects basic cognitive skills. One of my uh, first meetings with the doctor, when she asked me just to repeat uh, simple things, and she, I think she gave me five things, and it might have been something like bus, dog, um, truck, um, camera, chair. And she said, remember those, and went over them two or three times, uh, and then said to me, how are you feeling? Everything OK? You don't feel nervous? No, no, no. Uh, a minute later, she said, um, what are the things I asked you to remember? And I got two of them. And then sometime later after that, she said, do you remember what they were? And I think I said, bus. Um, and she looked up and, yeah. Pride's a wonderful thing, um, but there wasn't a lot of it around then. But you were renowned for being tough as nails on the footy field, and I think it actually takes a fair bit of strength to acknowledge your frailties. For a lot of the sports guys, I think um, most of us take on this belief that we've got to prove how tough we are, um, how rugged, and um, you know, if we put our hands up and seek sympathy, then we're going to be seen as the, as the real cowards of the game. But we've got to take it on and, uh, and admit um, that the problems are there. What was the diagnosis like for you? It was a really hard day. <laughs> um, I was I was okay um, until he got upset. If all gets upset, then that um, the, uh, that yeah, that um, was even harder for me. Um, Linda Adams has been by Wally's side throughout this challenging so period and has seen the crippling effect CTE has had on him more than anyone else. 
What exactly was the decline that you saw? The short-term memory stuff, repeating a story. I remember um, Wally picked me up, he talked to me about something and we were driving along and about three minutes later he, he said, oh, it was as if he'd never told me, told me the same story. And I said, okay. And then about three or five minutes later, oh, told me the same story. And those sort of things, mm, they yeah. stood out the most, those repetitive, yeah. uh, repetitive stories. Strangely, I do remember uh, <laughs> that time. Uh, the, the embarrassment of it, and I, I asked how many times mm. did I say that? And you feel your face go red, you, and you think, well, there's just another one. How about that for the very first live bar round show? We've got origin legends in the house. Wally Lewis, everybody. The diagnosis will come as a shock to the legions of fans who still enjoy Wally's work in the media. Freddie, I don't believe it. Freddie used to turn around and say, and where are you going to be in the world? You're a 5 8 You can still spin a great yarn and has regular gigs, but behind the scenes, it isn't easy. This meticulously detailed diary is the only way that Wally feels comfortable tackling the day ahead. I do rely upon this. I, I actually call this my best friend. I carry it around everywhere and people you know, wonder why the hell I'm carrying a diary around with me. Well, um, I often just say, oh, I don't, don't want to miss things. I don't want to forget about things and make sure that I'm there. Hey, do you know what this tells me though? You're, you're working harder than me. <laughs> He's doing it, yeah, doing it quite well. And when Wally Lewis walks into your office, yeah. what do you think? I think, oh my God, it's Wally Lewis. <laughs> But then I got to switch into doctor. Yeah, and I guess the, the process of I guess seeing mm. a decline. Oh, it's devastating. I, I cried <laughs> that night on my way home from work. It's really, it's hard to see these players go through it. They're people I've admired and, and loved growing up. So the last thing I want to do is diagnose them with dementia. <laughs> you know. Leading neurologist Rowena Mobbs is seeing more and more footy players suffering the debilitating effects of CTE. Um, it's that continued change that we see that's worrisome. But this particular diagnosis has had an extraordinary impact on the doctor. I knew he was an elite sportsman, but not only that, the best. He had the most exquisite coordination I've seen in anybody. But when I got to testing his brain, not so. You know, he doesn't come up to even normal, comes well below where he ought to be for his intelligence, sadly. So these are the fluid-filled spaces across Wally's brain. Rather than packed with that brain tissue itself, we'd like to see it much fuller than that. The evidence of Wally's brain deterioration is glaringly obvious when you compare these two MRI scans. The first image is a healthy brain. The second is Wally's. You effectively think that these should be full all the way up here and these valleys are, are a bit of a worry. Yes, so we know that there is a gradual shrinkage of the brain and, and so that raises suspicion for CTE, for a dementia type process. Suspect's the interesting word there because, you know, a lot of people I speak to say, well, you can only diagnose CTE once someone's died. And if a patient's alive, it's just guesswork. You could interpret it as guesswork, but it's educated guesswork by a specialist in dementia. It does look like CTE. There's plenty of evidence pointing towards that. Yeah, I'm 90% certain that this is the case. Confirming Wally has CTE was tougher than usual for Dr Mobbs. This black area here, firstly, is his old epilepsy surgery. In 2007, Wally underwent surgery for epilepsy, which saw a small portion of his brain removed. Yet countless tests and treatments for his latest rapid memory decline all keep pointing to the same thing. It's CTE. When one person told me, I think I was in a, a little bit of denial. Uh, when two doctors told me, I was in a little bit of doubt. Mm. When it came around to three in a row, I thought, the door's been opened here, and now it's time to, to walk through it and head in the right direction. Lewis, 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 Wally's challenge is one that a number of former footy players from all codes are now waking up to. And while many are considering class actions and compensation claims against both the NRL and the AFL, you might be surprised to hear what Wally thinks about all the hits that he took. If you had your career again, would you go as hard again? Wally Lewis is a rugby league legend. 
an immortal, one of the greatest players the game has ever seen. And these days, even though he's retired from the footy field, there remains that drive to win. Still got it, Wall. Plenty of slice on it. Yep, there it goes again. Wally finds solace in another sport as he comes to terms with the recent devastating diagnosis. One that he's at times trying to see the lighter side of. A lot of my mates often tell me that I intentionally don't remember a couple of shots every hole night. Like <laughs> you don't mark it down, so there was instant denial going on with that. So it has its benefits, the memory issue. <laughs> it certainly does. The King has chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE, a slow form of dementia caused by repetitive head knocks. We don't want him to live in fear for the rest of his life anymore. There's no need to live in fear, so... And there's no need to go through it alone either. It's a fear and anxiety that has privately crippled this very public figure for years, and only those close to him, like his partner Linda Adams, have witnessed the suffering. The kangaroos fly out to England tonight. At the start of the year, Wally decided to step back from his presenting duties on Nine News in Queensland, as the pressure of hosting live TV while battling CTE was all too much. When all of my uh, workmates at Nine used to say, we used to watch you um, at around about six o'clock just while you're waiting for the sports, mm -hmm. you'd be walking around like you were preparing for the 100 metre sprint final at the uh, next Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. I used to feel myself in a lather of sweat and then uh, I just had this fear of failure. It's from action for everybody. My fear of making another mistake, um, coming up with um, you know a simple conversation between the newsreaders and me delivering the wrong answer. The memory loss is sad to see, but the, the hardest thing to watch is, is someone so proud feeling embarrassed? Yeah, yeah, that's really hard. Another story, <laughs> um, and this one really hit home. He'd missed his daughter-in-law's birthday, and to him, that you know, uh, really upset him. And he said, "I've got a, I, I can't remember Sarah's birthday," and so we put it in his diary and put it in his phone. And 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 I said, yeah, "It's there. It's 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 all good. You won't forget it." And um, and only a few days later, he sort of said, "I think I've forgotten Sarah's birthday." And I think that that conversation went on probably about ten times. And. I didn't get the birthday card to her on time. He didn't, and that really, yeah, yeah, that upset him. What causes CTE? Well, we know ex exactly what causes it. It's repetitive head injuries. It's the 10,000, 20,000 hits to the head plus the force of that, the total Gs that your brain's experienced. And if you're a legend of the game like Wally, those tackles again and again and again, that adds up. Leading neurologist Dr Rowena Mobbs sees former footy players suffering CTE every single week. It's a hot button issue for both the NRL and the AFL as they stare down the prospect of some almighty legal battles ahead that could cost them billions in compensation. They'll be nervously watching this week as the findings of a Senate inquiry into concussions and repeated head traumas in contact sports is handed down in Canberra. And Rowena hopes the recommendations will protect the next generation. I, I guess why it upsets you is yeah. it, it, it doesn't have to be like this. Every time a kid steps onto the footy field and we don't have a CT policy in place from the sports, I think that's an extreme injustice. I think it's dangerous and I think it's unethical. And so I, as a doctor, will keep battling till we get acceptance of people with probable CTE and we see change to prevent it. That's the thing. Can't necessarily prevent all dementia, but we can in this case. Here's to Wally Lewis for lacing on a boot. For Wally, Sometimes prevention is right. too late. Sometimes he plays it cute. With his legacy on the field pretty much unrivaled, it's now his legacy off it that'll be just as remarkable. He's made the big decision to donate his brain for research, leaving behind a gift for the future. Well, he gives so much to so many people. Um, he gives his time and this is, if this is his final gift, then that's a pretty amazing gift. Anything that, uh, that I can pass on to anybody else for their benefit, for the benefit of their family um, and for the progress of, uh, of health, uh, certainly it is well and truly worthwhile.
there can be a bit of a stigma around this. How proud are you to see Wally standing up and, and owning this? So proud. Scared but proud. I don't, I don't want people to look at Wally Lewis differently. People love Wally for the strong man that Wally was on the field, for the humble man that he is off the field. Um, and he is a strong man. He's the strongest man that I've ever known in my life. Um, I don't want people looking at him differently. I don't want them looking at him with pity. Um, I want people to look at Wally and go, well, he's still a strong man. He's still dealing with something else now. Wally may have received one of the greatest knocks of his life with this diagnosis, but the King promises not to stay down for long. And he wants to make one thing very clear. He bears no ill will towards rugby league and will not be seeking any compensation. If you had your career again, would you go as hard again? Would I change a thing? <laughs> no, I wouldn't, Tom. I, I really wouldn't. I love the game that I played. I felt privileged to have played it, to have been given that chance. And when you go out there and you're, you're wearing the representative jerseys, particularly the one for Australia, you do. You feel 10 foot tall and bulletproof. Well, you might think you are, but actually you're not. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thank you for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes, which are on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.